Hello everyone, welcome back to No Man's Sky Beyond. Today we're going to start a uh, walkthrough for No Man's Sky Beyond, but we're going to do it in permadeath. I want you to notice that I'm almost at five hours on this save, and I've talked about this before. When I start a new save that I intend to keep around, I spend time in that first star system. I don't rush to the hyperdrive and and jump to the next system and go like I've done on on prior uh, shows that I've done. I've done that on prior shows just to move the story along really quickly. But I want to do a walkthrough. So I want this guy to be as well prepared as possible. So we've spent almost five hours. And uh, during that time, uh, I've gone through the process of waking up and uh, finding a multi-tool that will last a little while and uh, getting a little bit of money in the bank and uh, we'll see what else we have going on here uh, he doesn't have any uh, suit slots yet except for the very first one that you get and we're standing here in the space station I haven't changed my clothes there's the uh, radiant pillar so I've got uh, some basic things on hand I've got chromatic metal I've secured fuel by finding well by buying gold and uh, using the refiner, here's some leftover gold, uh, and making pyrite. Uh, the system had uranium, or I found metal fingers, uh, whatever you come across first. Metal fingers are better because it doesn't cost anything. <laughs> I've got a good supply of ferrite. I still have the dihydrogen uh, from the beginning of the game. Uh, I did uh, the dihydrogen jelly loop, and where uh, you make dihydrogen jelly in your suit and then you cook it in the refiner to increase its uh, amount <clears throat> so I have that one uh, that one suit slot uh, I don't have uh, any other suit slots uh, the system has a s-class movement module I've got nanites which I've built up by visiting buildings and we'll go ahead and put some of that I've got a, a, a radiation uh, oops, I've got a radiation, radiation shield, and I've got one life support module. Uh, just what the system offers, we need a lot more salvage data. I'll do that between today and tomorrow's uh, episode, or today and I should say the next episode. Uh, this won't be a daily thing. Uh, we're still doing permadeath journey, and we're in, right in the middle of doing the uh, community event for Quicksilver. Uh, I also have a little bit of leftover magnetized ferrite, but I will be switching to using uh, silicate as much as I can um, for the use of the terrain manipulator. Let's look at the multi-tool. This was offered to me uh, by a Viking. Uh, I found an S-Class uh, bolt caster upgrade in a, um, in a damaged machinery. The weapon already had a bolt caster on it, and I have the terrain manipulator right here, which I'm going to go ahead and load, and the mining beam. We have a little bit of condensed carbon. I have some stuff to fix. This is going to be a little difficult to fix, but I'll probably buy a different weapon. Uh, so two wiring looms. We've got chromatic metal. Uh, just enough to do that once, but we've got some money. So let's go upstairs and change our clothes and get ready to go. Oh, also, I do have the hyperdrive and uh, it is fueled. That's the first warp cell. I don't know how to make uh, any matter yet. I haven't gotten that far. So we're just going to go ahead and go with what I always go with. Because that's the fastest thing to do. And gloves, and legs, and boots, and backpack, and I don't worry about the banner. I'm not even really sure what the banner's about yet. <laughs> I suppose I could take the time to look it up, huh? That would save some time. Uh, this guy, as I said, I believe he has the movement module. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he does. So let's get another one of those. We'll go ahead and put that in. Here we go. Now we can move really fast. 
So in lieu of finding defense shields, which I don't think he had, uh, I'm choosing to use movement modules so I can run away. <laughs> so we have thermal protection, toxic protection. Uh, here's S-class hot protection. Here's another life support. And just C-class shield module, which I could use. It's effective, but I don't really want to waste the nanites on it. So we'll just go ahead and do this, and we'll be careful and run away. <laughs> Pretty sure that we don't have hyperdrives available. I have to admit, though, it's been a few days since I played this save. I've been really busy uh, working on my other saves. I do have pulse engines, but oh, here's a hyperdrive. Uh, how many do we have? Let's do it. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to move this out of the way, I guess. And we'll just drop that hyperdrive right in place. And we can go a little bit further. All right. Now, did we do the economy scanner? We did not do it. All right. That's okay. Uh, I believe you can buy an economy scanner at a minor settlement. Uh, but that may cost nanites that I didn't have in that moment. This is an interesting looking fighter. <laughs> it's a Rasa, but it's also a Starfighter. You can see there's another one right there. They're both B-18s. That's pretty cool looking. How much do they want for that? Ooh, we need money for that. We are going to go ahead and uh, leave the star system today. Open. Let's see if there's nanites yet. Nope, not quite yet. That takes a couple of days to respawn with nanites. Is there any travelers here? What game mode calls the fourth race, and I usually call dead people. <laughs> I don't see any travelers here. Not today, anyway. Uh, I don't think I have any maps. We'll just check really quickly. Uh, I have one, so we're going to, or I, I have four or less, I should say. I have four of them, so we're going to hang on to those in case we need them. And the microprocessor. All right, now then. Oh, here's the same ship, but it's blue this time. Was it blue before? It looks more gold in this shot. Gold and blue. Yeah, they look the same. What do we got? A C-15. Okay. I don't think that this is a particularly wealthy system. It might be. Let's go ahead and look. This is our one and only system. Uh, Tap Perks is our starting system. It's a Viking system. That was a good draw. We have three planets and one moon. It's a medium economy. And the conflict level is unstable, but that's pretty typical for permadeath. <laughs> so far, I have managed to get 15 milestones. Uh, that two of them are from walking around. Uh, I have uh, destroyed 10 sentinels, uh, two starships. I've survived 10 days of extreme uh, survival, which means there's an extreme survival planet in the system. That's pretty unusual. And I've learned five words. All right. Looks like I haven't met all of the aliens yet, but let's get out of here. I don't think I've left anything particularly important behind. And we're just going to go ahead and go. It says warp to another system. That's the first uh, thing that you do as soon as you get your hyperdrive. So that's what we're going to do. Now, because they've changed expanding the base, we don't need a GEC and a Corvax system right away. So I'm going to try and stick with Viking systems just for the nanites. And there's a Viking system right there. We have no information. It's only 20 light years away. Three planets is very manageable. Looks like we have a lush right in front of us. Let's hope it's a nice one. Let's see. 
Oh, aggressive sentinels. I've done a scan, so that's going to bring up my anomalous subspace signal. It wants another scan. There's a gamma planet, so there's more uranium. Oh, nice. And I really like this piece of music. <laughs> All right, anomalous, anomalous signal detected. Coordinates logged. Signal matches previous uh, freighter trace. And always with uh, No Man's Sky, the instructions for whatever is immediately present on your log is in the lower right corner. It's not always the right uh, mission highlighted. So if you're getting information in your lower right corner that doesn't make sense to you, just to open your log and check and make sure that you're on the mission that you want to be on. In this case, we're going to stick with the Awakenings mission because that's going to drive us right through the story. This is a good planet to have uh, in our list of systems because it has pyrite uh, and it's a desert, which means during the day, we, unless there's a storm, we shouldn't need any uh, sort of hazard protection. I'm hoping that this system will have uh, defense shields. If not this system, then the next system um, because we need to get those on board for permadeath as quick as we can. We're approaching a trade post here. Now, as always, flying the Radiant Pillar without pulsation up upgrades is sometimes harrowing. <laughs> it flies just like a kite in a storm. <laughs> when I was first learning how to play this game, the hardest thing that I did was learning how to fly that thing. All right, now it's going to tell us who to talk to. That person's over here. We're going to talk to everyone, but this guy first. All righty. Likelihood of travel or anomaly. Now beyond two standard deviations. Suggest further aid. Blueprint offered. Unlike the other life forms I have met so far, this one speaks in a language I understand, and yet I cannot comprehend their meaning. They speak as if they do not know what they are saying, as if their mind is not their own. The alien offers me a blueprint, a means to construct my own antimatter. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I take the antimatter blueprint. Whoever's leaving this trail has some design, but what it is I cannot fathom. There is nothing to do but continue to follow. There's the blueprint. Requires chromatic metal and condensed carbon. Chromatic metal is on the ship, so it shows that I don't have any. Because unfortunately, when you're in a trade post, your ship is out of range. Let's meet this other guy. See if we can get another Viking word. <laughs> We're gonna request dialect help. Like I said in the tutorial, we're not going to challenge that yet, especially with Viking. Uh, we're not gonna try to demonstrate our knowledge of language uh, very soon because the Viking can do quite a bit of damage. If you get the answer wrong, they, uh, they tend to punch you in the face. So we got to be careful with them. <laughs> All right. Here's another word. And we'll take another Viking symbol. All right. Now then, let's take a look at what these ships offer. It doesn't matter which ship you go to. Uh, oops, where's the guy at? He's out wandering around. Uh, I don't know where he is. <laughs> Let's talk to this guy. <laughs> There's another milestone, so 16 of them done. At trade posts, uh, all of the ships that land 
are going to offer these basic things. You're going to get the effigies and daggers, uh, some kind of fuel, either tritium or launch fuel, something along those lines. This guy's offering pugnium gold and facium, and uh, facium is a plantable uh, substance for farming, and it's also used uh, for taming animals and making recipes. And gold turns into pyrite if you need it. We're on a planet full of pyrite. Uh, if we uh, look around, there's copper. You might be able to see some pyrite from here. There's some pyrite right there. We don't right now need any, but it's good to have this uh, in our list of planets. It's the middle of the night, so it's going to be cold. Let's see what this guy offers. All right, again, he's got effigies and daggers, launch fuel, pugnium, facium, and this time this guy has frost crystal, which is one of the ways that you can make glass with. And it's also uh, used in making circuit ports, but we don't need that stuff yet. So if you are getting ready to do farming, this is a good place to come to to get all of the plants that you need. All right. I'm going to go down here and get in our ship. Okay. And we've got everything that we need now. now it's trying to tell me to use a planetary chart. So I'm going to look in my log. It's going to say warp to another system. But in order to do that, I need to make a warp cell. Oh, I still have fuel because I have that S-Class uh, upgrade. But we're going to make one. So we need oxygen and ferrite, and condensed carbon and chromatic metal. And we're going to go ahead and add that to the to the hyperdrive. All right. Hyperdrive refuel refueled. Launch into space to test interstellar systems. I hit the light post. <laughs> All right. Well, it's telling us about interstellar travel. Uh, the galaxy map offers a wealth of information about nearby planetary systems. Browse nearby systems or available routes to choose your next destination. All right, we'll do that in a minute. Let's go visit the space station first. Uh-oh. Well, we've got hostiles after us. After you've entered a system, you can look in your discoveries. And now we're in Tifangdo. And it tells us that there's three Viking planets, medium economy, and the conflict level is unruly, which is about the same thing as unstable. <laughs> we're going to get attacked a lot. And especially at the beginning of the game, it's important to make good decisions about that. I'm going to wait and see how many ships there are. There's two of them. I have some sodium, but I don't have a gun. I just have rockets and a photon cannon. A lot of people are really good at using a photon cannon. I'm not. <laughs> and I just prefer to hang out and wait until I have a really strong gun. It takes about 30 to 45 seconds to lose them, but you will lose them if you continue to fly away. I do have some starship kills. I had one hostile scan that was one single ship, and I tracked down and killed a couple of pirates for their supplies. <laughs> now I'm out of pulse engine fuel, so I'm going to go ahead to my quick menu and add pyrite. There we go. If you're using uh, launch fuel uh, for your launch system, like the launch fuel canisters uh, make sure that you go ahead and run out of launch fuel before you reload your engine uh, unless you really feel like you're going to need it in a hurry because it's just a waste of fuel to keep putting launch fuel in when it's not empty yet with uranium you don't have that problem because it'll only put in as much as you actually need Alrighty. Alright, 
the great thing about Viking systems is that both back rooms have uh, nanite uh, machines in them. We're going to go ahead and get a suit slot on this side and check and see if he has defense shields. <laughs> All right, we only have 350 na 358 nanites, but we might be able to get enough for this. This only requires 610. All right, so let's go ahead and get our suit slot. We're going to put that slot into cargo. And then see if we have anything we can move into cargo right away. It looks like we can put the carbon back there. All right. Gives us more room. Here we go. Now we can just fill the top section. We're going to check out these other guys in just a minute. This is in a medium economy. Uh, and I'm not looking for a multi-tool uh, to find for other people. But I am going to continue to look for a multi-tool that may be helpful to us. All right, so there's Pucknium and Platinum here. If you want to cook nanites, you can do it that way. And let's see if we can afford two of those. Uh, I don't think so. We'll wait. All right, let's talk to the bartender. <laughs> he wants us to pick out uh, which uh, side to be on. Do we want to be on the side of the Viking, or do we want to be on the side of the Sentinels? I always pick the Viking. I don't like Sentinels. He just gave us a bolt caster, S-Class module. So let's see if we have room for it. Oh, looks like we're going to have to move stuff. Oh, we do need the wiring looms. Okay, let's go ahead and buy them. You can sell that bolt caster upgrade, uh, and uh, they're pretty valuable even at only 70%. So let's go ahead and fix that so we can move it. We'll put that over. Oops. Come on now. There we go. Let's put that over there. That right there. And then we'll put that there. Now our gun is even more powerful. But since we got it for free, I'm going to go ahead and use it. There's some more nanites. Here's a geck. <laughs> he looks like a frigate salesman. We'll just get a word from him. Ah, uh, geck symbol. A word for geck. Let's see if this guy's anything but a pirate. Nope, he's a good guy. And let's see here. We'll do a trade symbol. Give. Alright. More nanites. Alright. Let's look really quickly. I keep running into door jams. There's rank three. That's awesome. Alright. Let's see what we have here. That's a B class. What we have is a C class. So this is better. But it costs two and a half million dollars, or two point three million dollars. So uh, we might actually find a better weapon before we get to that value again. I have been up that high, I believe. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, not quite. Okay. Let's see what he has. <clears throat> Looks like no, no S-Class scanners here. The scanner is going to be how we're going to make lots and lots of money really early. We could um, wait until we get to the anomaly and buy the blueprint for a large refiner and then go cook chlorine. And that might be part of the plan. You don't have to be limited to just one thing. Go grab the other nanites. All right, that was 47. What are we up to? 615. Let's see if there's any out here. Look at them all sitting nicely. <clears throat> okay, 
don't see any more nanites. Let's really quickly grab some words from these guys. See, it says I can practice language skills. It's because I'm rank three, but it's too soon. <laughs> too soon with the Viking. <laughs> I have actually, on my main permadeath save, had uh, about a quarter of my life taken away by a well-placed punch in a space station recently. <laughs> Come back over here. It's really important that you take the time to meet these people at the beginning of the game and get these words so you can get your milestones uh, so that you can get Lots and lots of nanites as soon as possible. <laughs> no need to take offense there, Corvax. I just want to know a word. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, there we go. We need to warp again, uh, so that we can get through that part of the uh, awakenings. My throat's still a little bit uh, tired from, uh, I had a really light cold last week. And we've already visited him, and not this guy. <laughs> He's got to stand up and turn around and look at us. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, let's see. We already met that guy. And I think we are just about done. There's a Gek. Oops. Wants to give us a milestone first. We don't have that requirement, uh anymore to reach a certain level of milestones uh, in order to uh, function with the anomaly. Uh, we used to have that. Uh, you needed to meet 30 aliens uh, in order to go on to the next step with uh, Polo and Nada on the anomaly. And we don't have that problem anymore. All right. Let's see. Did we do everything here? We got the nanites from both rooms. Let's see if that was actually enough. I don't remember exactly how many it wanted. But I might have some discoveries that I can add to it. Alright. By knowing ahead of time what's available, uh, it prevents you from spending the nanites on something that you shouldn't. So there's our first shield. Alright. Gonna put it right there. There we go. So we have 85% uh, shield strength and 33% core health. Not a bad shield. It can be stronger, but that's that's okay. It's our first one. All right. It says warp to another system in space. What we're gonna do really quickly before we do that is we're going to touch ground, even on the aggressive sentinel planet. We're just doing this so that we have these planets in our discoveries. This might be closer. All you need to do is get out of your ship. If you happen to land next to a building, you take advantage of that for sure. So we're just getting out of the ship just to put this in the discoveries. There we go. Malicious. Good grief. Malicious sentinels. Yeah. That's going to be another extreme survival planet. And I personally think it's the safer way to get uh, the extreme survival done. So we've been there. That other planet, it might have actually been behind me and not in front of me. We'll just jump out here so we can see. 
Here it is. Of course, all these planets that are out on the spawn ring that are part of your start system, um, those are all systems and planets that you can upload. And I may actually go into uh, the discoveries and actually state that S-class defense shields can be here. But we only have two star systems, and I think I can, I think I can remember for a little while longer. <laughs> These planets out here are also pretty far apart. We have uh, one more jump to make in this part of Awakenings. Uh, this is actually the second part. The very first part is just learning how to survive and gather resources. And uh, it's your biggest opportunity to make as much money as you can and when we go back to the start system uh, you'll see here's a good place to land uh, when we go back to the start system you'll see that uh, there's actually quite a bit of money to be made there all right so we have frequent sentinels uh, high flora uh, bountiful fauna nerto 4 and it's Gamma Planet, so another opportunity, oops, another opportunity to get uh, Uranium. Alrighty. I know this is a uh, manufacturing facility, and the desire to take this facility down is pretty high. I feel it. Um, whether I can do that or not, I don't know. But in order to facilitate that, I'm going to go into first person. That way there's nothing obstructing my view of that door right there. There we go. We got it. Oops, I didn't quite make it uh, to the landing pad beacon. That's okay. We're going to run for the door. Here we go. Remember, we've got a defense shield, so we can take a couple of shots. We also have movement modules. There we go. Now, here's an opportunity to kill sentinels. They can't shoot me in here. And I'm doing this because it's milestone related. And also because there's nanites and pugnium available, as well as more bullets. If I can get far enough away from him, here we go. <laughs> of course, you wake up knowing how to make bullets. There we go. Let's use the mining beam. All right. Where's the other barrel? There it is. All right. Let's get all this other stuff. curtains. <laughs> That's good for our Viking standing. Oops, did I get the nanites? I did. Okay. There's nothing in those. All right, let's see if we can figure this out without really knowing much. <laughs> the terminal flashes two alerts, presumably the source of the alarms currently ringing in my ears. Let's see, we know the word interloper, and that's all we know. After printing out its status update, the terminal presents the option to override either alert. From the holographic display, the warnings appear to relate to damaged components within the facility and the presence of an interloper. Let's try the intruder alert. There we go. The facility becomes operational. Normal operations have resumed and I have access to the facility's main control panel. You can get nanites, units, or learn a recipe. And since this is a new save, I suggest you learn the recipe. <laughs> Let's see what we have access to. If we take the Atlas V2 pass, 
we can get access to the war pipe core right away. If we take the other route, we can get access to uh, thermic condensate and lubricant or uh, portable reactors, quantum processors, but we don't know how to make all this stuff. And I'm thinking in the immediate future, it might be more valuable to have hyper cores right away. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So we'll take the Atlas V2 pass and the warp hyper core. And all that requires is antimatter and storm crystals, and it saves a lot of space. All right, we're standing with the Viking and uh, with the Gek went up, and we got a couple of blueprints. Pretty cool. All right, let's see what our alert status is. It's level three, but the ship is right outside the door, so I think we can make it. Let's get out of here. Not a single point of damage. Here we go. That was a good place to land. Now we gotta wait out this 33 seconds or we're gonna be facing Sentinel drones in space. And we definitely don't wanna do that. Uh, in a radiant pillar <laughs> without any shield upgrades. It takes a lot less time uh, to just wait out the 33 seconds uh, than it does to start a whole new save. So it's better to err on the side of caution when you first start permadeath. Alrighty, here we go. Let's go to the next star, star system. Let me go. <laughs> right. Here we go. Let's find another Viking system if we can. It's Corvax. There's another Viking system. Lots more planets to land on there. And another milestone reached. All right, new Gek rank. We also got a new Viking rank in that last system. And now we have a, the next part of the Awakenings mission starting up. Starship monitoring system reports error. Guidance system malfunction. Searching for other routes. Searching, searching. <laughs> Obtained. Destination 16. <laughs> Accept new guidance. You can accept the new guidance or decline the guidance. It's totally up to you. But because we're doing a walkthrough, we're definitely going to accept it. Plotting route. All right. All right, it's given us the place that it wants us to go to. Which is going to be that frozen planet. But we're going to go ahead and go to the space station first. And we will pick it up next time. Uh, picking up our free warp drive, or our free warp cell, rather. <laughs> and we'll start Artemis. I also need to uh, go back to the start system and get as much uh, salvage data as I can because in the next step, in the next star system, we'll be meeting Polo and Nada on the anomaly. And on the anomaly, we're gonna be able to get blueprints. And the more salvage data we bring with us, the more blueprints we can get right away. So let's go ahead and get all of this stuff, find out what this guy has for sale. Remember, we're worrying about our personal safety first, and then we'll worry about uh, money and shields, or money and starships and guns and all of that. This guy also has shields. He also has movement modules. That's really great. Okay, I don't see a scanner though, so we still haven't found a system with a scanner. Let's go ahead and get this. We're gonna switch to cargo. Here we go. Pretty much out of money. <laughs> Let's take a look at the multi-tool. It's a great big gigantic rifle. 
It is B class. Not bad. Still not 24 slots. Alrighty. There is a S class scanner right there. We need 568 nanites when we come back here. We'll go in the bar really quickly. Grab those free nanites. 65 of them. See what's for sale here. We have a medium supply system again. And let's see here. Here's chromatic metal right here. That's awesome. All right. All right, when we come back next time, we will go meet Artemis and go to the anomaly and uh, I'll have lots of salvage data because I'm going to go home and dig it up. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you again. Have a great day.